if we use a simple cart and develop a track that can be raised by books, and then we put a motion detector on the end, and we allow the track to be 250 centimeters, and we release the car, what would happen if we adjust the height with different amounts of books, ranging from one book all the way to six books? What would happen to the speed of our car? So here's what we came up with. We put a camera on the top of our cart, and rather than using books, we use blocks that represent the height of the books, ranging from three to six books. Our track is a one by four piece of wood that's going to run across to a flat surface desk. Our track length is 250 centimeters, and we put a motion detector on the end. A motion detector essentially sends out a sound wave that deflects back to it, and then that signal goes to the computer and gives us a graph that indicates the motion of the object that's coming at it or away from it. Okay, the problem that we're trying to solve is if we adjust the height of the ramp, will the car accelerate? Before we actually start the lab, students have to come up with a hypothesis based upon as the ramp is raised, what will they think will happen? Will the car speed up? Will it slow down or will it stay at the same speed? It's important to always keep up with our data. So for this part of the trial, we know that our car will always be traveling 250 centimeters to the finish line. Reset the graph. Anymore. Set, go. Because there's lots of human error, we have to do many trials to avoid problems such as uh, timer issues, um, releases, or friction that might be occurring. On time because we really want a median area to try to determine our most accurate average, I like to attempt at least three trials during an investigation such as this, and then of course averaging those three trials together to come up with a good uh, midpoint to go with. 4.82. As you notice, our trial one and trial two do not match. And that's the reason for doing multiple trials is because of the human error in place. With our three trials now being evident, it's time to add up our three trials and divide by three. We end up with 4.50 seconds, which will be the time that we use for three books when we figure out our speed. Okay, we're going to move now to four book heights. So a little bit higher. Three point one five. Okay, Set, go. Okay, what do you got? Oh, three fifty eight. Three point five eight. Okay, you ready to go again? Go. Okay, what'd you get on that one? Three point two. Three point two nine. After writing down our trial times and then averaging it, we get 3.34 seconds, which is considerably less than the three book height, which was 4.50 seconds. Okay, we're going to five books now. Okay, here we go. On three, Continuing to two, stay with our experimental design, we still need to raise our ramp by a total of five and six books. So we still need to do three trials for each one of these heights. Okay, on your, on your mark. After recording our three trials for a five book height, we end up with an average time of 2.70 seconds. Okay, let's go with six books. Okay. 
Once again, after raising our ramp for the final time, we still need to do three trials and record the times for each. 25. On your mark, set, go. Okay, last trial. Yeah, that's starting to do the last one. That's stabilizing. Yeah, you can't tell where I am. On your mark, get set, go. After completing all of our trials for our book heights, we notice that the times tend to be higher at the top and lower at the bottom. Does this mean that the speed is increasing? By taking a trial from each one of our setups, we put them side by side to see if we could visually see a difference. Go. Good. It seemed pretty quick, but I could definitely see a difference between the six books and three books. So let's watch it in slower motion. Yeah. First place, second place, third place, fourth place. Good. Each point on our graph will require two pieces of data, our distance, which was 250 centimeters, and then our average time for each book height. For example, 4.50 seconds for three book heights. When developing our graph, we want to go ahead and make sure on our y-axis we have our distance and our x-axis we develop our time. The first line we're going to plot is from our three book height. If you notice, it starts at 0 centimeters and goes all the way up to 250 centimeters. That's because our car started at a 0 position and accelerated for 250 centimeters. The two points we used was the time it took for the car to travel that far, which was 4.5 seconds, and it traveled 250 centimeters. Using this same method, we're going to plot the other lines of our other three book heights. Elevating our ramp from three books to four books gives us another line that shows to be even steeper than the previous one. Elevating our ramp by five books gives us even a steeper line than the four book height. Our final point for six book height shows us the steepest line of all of them. Basically, this tells us that the car, even though it was traveling 250 centimeters every time, it was able to cover that distance in a shorter period of time, which indicates it was speeding up. To calculate speed, we simply take our distance and divide it by time. So for our three book height, we had 250 centimeters and we divided it by 4.50 seconds. This gives us a speed of 55.56 centimeters per second. Using our data from the rest of our trials, we'll go ahead and calculate the speed for the other book heights. For four books at 250 centimeters distance, it traveled 3.35 seconds. That gives us a speed of 74.63 centimeters per second. For five books at 250 centimeter distance, it took 2.70 seconds. That gives us a speed of 92.59 centimeters per second. For six books at 250 centimeter distance, it took 2.48 seconds. That gives us a speed of 100.81 centimeters per second. Analyzing our data shows that as the book height increased, so did the speed. Let's make a graph that visually shows the differences in speed compared to our book heights. So on the x-axis, we're going to put the height of our books, which is the independent variable, which is what we changed throughout the experiment. On the y-axis, we will indicate the speed. This is the dependent variable, which is what we are measuring. So for three books, we showed that it traveled 55.56 centimeters per second. For four books, it traveled 74.63 centimeters per second. For five books, 92.59 centimeters per second. And for six books, it traveled 101.81 centimeters per second. The final step of the scientific method is to form a conclusion based upon the data that you collected during your experiment. One of the hypotheses you could have had was if I raise the ramp, the speed of the car will stay the same. However, the data did not support this, so your hypothesis would be incorrect. Another one would be if I raise the ramp, the speed of the car will slow down. Again, the data did not support this, so that hypothesis would be incorrect. The final hypothesis you could have formed was if I raise the ramp, the speed of the car will increase. The data did support this, so that would be a correct hypothesis. Let's review the scientific method that was utilized in this experiment. The first step was to state the problem. Our problem was what would happen to the speed of a car placed on a ramp if it were elevated. Number two is to develop a hypothesis. 
A hypothesis is what you think will happen during the experimental process. In this case, the car was either going to speed up, slow down, or stay the same as we raise the ramp. Number three is to design an experiment with one independent variable to be tested. This is so we isolate the one thing that's going to make the change. In this case, it was raising the ramp. All the other variables remain constant as a control in the experiment. Number four, record your data. We used a data table which had three trials for each height of the ramp. This was to help eliminate human error and other variables that might happen during the experimental process. We used the average time that the car traveled certain distances. Number five, analyze our results. We did this by calculating speed and then coming up with graphs that represented what happened in our experiment. Number six, form a conclusion supporting or disproving your hypothesis. In this case, the data supported the hypothesis that as the ramp was elevated, the car would speed up. Thank you.